We're not talking about CORE. CORE Harlan <laughs> live this morning in Northeast Portland at the newly renovated Starks Vacuum Museum. Good morning, CORE. Hey, stop talking about my home life there when you mention <laughs> unappreciated. You know, vacuums, we are here at the Rug Sucking Museum here at Starks at Grand and Northeast uh, Cooch. They put this museum together. They're going to have a ribbon cutting on this Thursday afternoon at 4 o'clock. There'll be prizes, a lot of cool stuff. But I wanted to take you on a brief history of the vacuum. Starting back here with 19, uh, what is this, 1910, the cyclone, okay? In the day back in 1910, the man would apparently uh, crank this thing here. There's some bellow, uh, bellows in here. It would create a little suction. And then the man's wife would take the vacuum here with an attachment and go around the room and clean the house. It was a two-person job. Back in the day, if you can imagine that. So, uh, so as things go on, things get a little bit more advanced. Here's Rick Nye, by the way, the curator of this museum. This guy could talk for probably 24 hours straight about vacuums. In the 30s, vacuums started doing more things than just vacuuming. Okay, and I want to show you. This is a this is a 1920s an airway, right? Right. 1920s airway. Uh -huh. uh, this one here. First of all, hang on a second. Let's do the thing that the vacuum people always do. Let's get a little. Uh, let's get a little of this. Pour a little bit of that on your, so you've had a home sales demonstration. Maybe they do a little bit of that. Okay, so fire up the airway, Rick. Okay. First lightweight vacuum. Could vacuum up. It still does pretty well. Yep. And what you could do, this is really unique, is you could turn this. Right. And it became a canister type. And you could reach up and get the cobwebs. And there's some, still some pretty good suction out of yeah. here, right? Out of the yeah. end of that handle end of this, right? Right. Okay. And you could vacuum up some more. Look at that. Vacuum up, get in the corners. Oh, that's pretty cool. So this would have been 1920s as electricity was going on. Let's shut this off a second. Whoop. Well, there that goes. All right, set that down there. Is it shut off? Okay, 30. Last thing over here. I want to come over here. This is the Eureka Junior. This is our donut stand we've had over here this morning. This is... Go ahead. The first one, the first lightweight hand vacs. Uh, this was really unique. So it vacuums. Still works great. 1930s now. 1930s. Okay, so when you're done vacuuming, you can turn this in and make a hair dryer out of this? Right, you took the bag off. Right. And there was an attachment that you put on here, plugged in here, and you could dry your hair. Check it out, Jenny. Dry your hair. For the vacuum. Here, let's, let's dry some of Rick's hair there. You got a few of them still up there. Beautiful. All right. This has been a real pleasure. Thank you very much for having us out here this morning. The museum here, the Rug Sucking Museum, the Vacuum Museum here at Starks, Northeast Grand and uh, Cooch. Opens 4 o'clock. The ribbon cutting is 4 o'clock on Thursday. You can go through the entire history of vacuums. And each and every one of these vacuums, and I'll finish with this here before we go to break. Even that one right there, mid-century right there, it floats on its own cushion of air. Showed you that last hour. It's worth looking at again. Really cool museum opens here Thursday. We'll be back with more news, traffic, and weather right after the break. So stay with us.